Got another exam question walkthrough for A-level chemistry. So we're on to number 28 now in the NMR playlist. And this one is only multiple choice questions. If you haven't seen the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So to answer this one, we need to see if there are any lines of symmetry in the molecule. And there is, there's this one here, right down the middle. So that means the hydrogens either side of the line of symmetry that are equidistant from each other will be equivalent. So we've got one, two, three different environments. So the answer was C. Number two, so the molecule used as the standard for NMR, it gives the zero PPN mark, is called tetramethylsilane sometimes referred to as TMS for short. So which of those options is TMS? It's option A. So number three is a little bit like number one where we're looking for lines of symmetry. So if we can see if there's any equivalent environment. Remember this one's about carbon. So for the first one, we've got their equivalents of one, two, three, four, five. So it's not that one. Next one, one, two, three, four. So there's your answer there. And just for revision purposes, we'll just quickly look at C and D to say why they're not the right answer. So C, you've got one, two, three, four, five. And the last one, one, two, and all of these are equivalent. So there's only three carbon environments in that one. Moving on to number four. So you can see I've already labeled up the type of environment for the peak. So we've got a C single bond at O environment here, and we've got two different CC environments. So straight away, we can rule out A and B because they wouldn't have that C single bond O because they're just alkanes. So it's down to C and D. So we'll start with 2-methylpropanol and all I'm interested in are the CC single bond environments because they've both got C single bond O. So you can see in, in option C we've got one, two carbon-carbon environments, whereas in option D we've only got one. So you can see the spectrum's got two of those environments, so the answer was option C. Moving on to number five, so here's the lines of symmetry again. So you can see there's a line of symmetry down there in one. There's no line of symmetry in two. And in three, you've got two lines of symmetry that way and that way. So in terms of carbon environments, in the first one, we've got one, two, three, four. In the next one, they're all different, so four again. And in the last one, we've got one, two, but they're all equivalent three. So only three in that one. So it was only one and two. And so therefore the answer was B. Number six, which compound produces two triplets in its proton NMR spectrum? So you can see I've already drawn them out and put lines of symmetry on if they've got one. So let's look at A. So these protons here are adjacent to the CH2 here. So that, that will be a triplet. These protons are adjacent to three, so they'll come out as a quartet. And then on the other side, this is not a symmetrical molecule, so we're going to see another quartet here because it's adjacent to CH3. And these CH3 protons are adjacent to a CH2, so they will come out as a triplet. So this one has actually got the two triplets on, so the answer was A. In option B, because you've got the line of symmetry down here, you're actually only going to see one triplet for these protons here. They're the same as those, so one triplet and one quartet for these protons here because of what they're adjacent to. Option C, we've got the line of symmetry down there, so these protons are equivalent, so we're going to see one singlet for them. And then these CH2s here will just come out as a singlet because you don't get splitting by an adjacent equivalent set of protons. Okay, so these are equivalent to each other. So you don't see a triplet, even though it's a CH2 adjacent, it's just another singlet. 
And then in option D, again, we've got a line of symmetry there. So they're equivalent, so we'll see a singlet for them. These are equivalent. They're adjacent to a CH2 group, so we'll see a triplet for them. And then for this environment here, you've got two adjacent um, CH2 groups, so you're going to see a quintet. So that's a signal of five peaks. Moving on to number seven, so proton exchange is when you add a certain substance and it removes any NH or OH protons, and that certain substance is D2O, so the answer was C. Number eight, so lines of symmetry again helping us out here, so which compound has the greatest number of peaks in its proton NMR spectrum, so their equivalent, so one, their equivalent, so this one's only got two. Next one, so their equivalent, so we'll get a peak for them, and their equivalent, another peak for them, so two again. Option C, so we've got a line of symmetry here, so their equivalent, that's unique, and there's a hydrogen on here, remember, because there's only three bonds there, so there's a hydrogen on there, so this has got three, so it's in the lead. And option D, we've got no line of symmetry, but we've got three equivalent CH3 groups there, so that would just be one signal for them. There's nothing else on here, because you've got your four bonds, and we've got a hydrogen there in that aldehyde group, so there's two for that one. So the answer was C. Moving on to number nine, which of the following statements is true? So carbon-13 NMR spectrum of Z shows four peaks, is that true? Yes, it is. We've got no line of symmetry, so all four of the carbons are in different environments. Statement two, proton NMR spectrum of Z shows five peaks. Well, they're all going to be different because there's no symmetry. So one, two, three, four, five. So that one's true. And finally, three, the proton NMR spectrum of Z run in D2O shows three peaks. So these protons will be removed in D2O and this one as well. So we're left with one, two, three. So that one's true as well. So all three were true. Option A. Number 10, so we've got a line of symmetry here. So that means these green proton environments are all the same. The blue ones are, and the orange ones are unique. So three there, so the answer was B. And finally, number 11. So obviously we need to know what 1,3-dimethylbenzene looks like. It looks like that. Have we got any lines of symmetry? Yes, we have. So how many different carbon environments? One, two, three, four, five. So the answer was C.